Welcome to the Stay Curious podcast brought to you by Alpha UK. My name's Chloe and this is Alex. This podcast is all about being open-minded, staying curious and fueling your intrigue. We're going to be hearing stories from people all across the UK and beyond. We're going to be covering big things, small things, the totally irreverent as well as the deeply theological. We hope you have fun listening along. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Stay Curious podcast. Thank you everyone so much for listening. We're so excited to be back with another episode of the Stay Curious podcast. And this week, something a little bit special, Chloe, because you went and interviewed some of the cast of The Chosen. I did. But before we get into that, Al, we always start every podcast. With I don't know up- what we're going to do after I've turned 40. Yes. Well, we start the podcast with an update of your 40 before 40. And to be honest, you're going a little bit slow. I'm a bit worried about you. I know. Because you're 40 in a couple of months and you're so on soon. number like, 12? No, 15, I reckon. Okay, 15. Yeah. You've got a lot to do. Maybe you'll do 30 before 40 instead. Yeah. Is that a thing? Maybe I could do 40 before 50. Yeah. Got a decade idea. to do it. Yeah. So um, this week's 40 before 40 is that you've always wanted to go to a premiere. Well, I feel like we've shoehorned this in a tiny bit because I did go to the premiere of season four, episodes one and two of The Chosen, which... Full disclosure, I'd never watched a single episode of The Chosen, and perhaps I um, had... They shouldn't have invited you. That they shouldn't have waste. invited me, no. yeah, I know. But it was a huge, was- glamorous event right in Leicester Square with a huge carpet. There was press there. There was like a fan pen where all the fans were like cheering. All the cast were coming up and having their pictures taken. So it was- And Al was like, I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so embarrassing. Yeah. Um, it was embarrassing that I hadn't seen it before. I was there, like, taking photos. Yeah, like, oh, you were fangirling it. You were loving it. Uh, and then we went into the hugest cinema I've ever been to. And we watched episodes one and two of season four. Honestly, cried all the way through. It's amazing, it's isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. And I am quite fussy about the TV I watch. And it is incredibly good. Yeah. The only thing was, then I went home and did some praying, because I was praying before bed. And in my mind, I was praying to... The, Jonathan, Jonathan Rumi. Rumi. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But somebody great. said that's not the end of the world because it does stop after a while. Yeah. So um I just gotta watch out. For Have that. you gone back and watched it yet? No. Oh. No. You but should, I am though. going to, yeah, I'm going to. It's We're really just good. finishing some other stuff. I've been watching the traitors on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair on. enough. I really like it. I feel like growing up as a Christian, there's a lot of Christian media out there. Well, maybe not a lot, but some. And I've enjoyed it, but I've never quite felt like this person truly represents the Jesus I know in the Bible. And I think Jonathan Rumi plays Jesus really he's well. He's so good at it. He's, he's like brilliant. the character of Jesus he plays. He's like funny and silly yes. and like teases the disciples and he's fun. And I think, yeah, that was Jesus. He's He was passionate about the kingdom of God, healing the sick, sharing the good news. But he was also a real human who was fun and had a laugh with his disciples. I love that about yeah. The Chosen. There's just these, because it's so big biblically accurate it's they don't stray they don't um they give jesus words that are directly from the bible so they're very true to the bible and then where they tell more of the story is with some of the disciples and like the extra bits that you know you can extrapolate they say um in the bible it talks about peter having a mother-in-law yeah therefore you can extrapolate that peter had a wife Mm. and so they tell stories about their that, marriage yeah, and yeah, things like it's that. super good. Oh, it's yeah. really good. But if you haven't heard of The Chosen, The Chosen is a historical drama um, shown through the lens of the people who are around Jesus. So yeah. that's what The Chosen is. And we kind of um, work alongside The Chosen a little bit recently, haven't we, Al? Yeah, The Chosen have got this incredibly ambitious goal of reaching a billion people. They basically want a billion people to watch at least five minutes of an episode so that they can introduce Jesus to a billion people. They're translating into 600 languages, which means they would reach 95% of the world's population in their own heart language. And what's amazing is they've got this huge reach, but people who watch The Chosen then um, they want somewhere to direct them to sort Mm. of think, if you've got questions about faith, if this has stirred something in you, then they're encouraging people to go and do Alpha. So we're just trying to finalise how they will encourage people to go and do Alpha after watching The Chosen. And also, it's good for us because we encourage people when they're doing Alpha, like on the Bible week or at the end, like The Chosen is a great thing to watch after. Yeah, there's this church in Llanelli in Wales who after their Alpha course ran like a Chosen course. And so those who'd become Christians or were still exploring faith, they then would watch an episode of The Chosen, open the Bible together and have a 
discussion and go on a discipleship journey together. So it works both ways, really. My other favourite thing about Llanethly is the toboggan in Pembrey. Oh, yeah, that is If good. you ever go to that part of Wales, yeah. Pembrey Park. Toboggan. In. Toboggan. In. And it's really, got a really beautiful good. beach. Yeah, yeah. I've not yeah. been to the beach there. Really? Lacha. Lacha. No, no, you're, you're Pembrey, further down, go down, more West Wales. Um, yeah. But the, this episode of our podcast is slightly different because, Chloe, we changed location, we changed it all up, and actually you were flying solo, I which was. seemed fair because you did fangle these, um, these Yeah, members. and you hadn't seen it, so no. fair enough, yeah. yeah. Um, but before we get into that, Al, we do have a listener question just before we go to the interview with The Chosen. And our listener question this week is Thomas from Swansea. And Thomas says that he is has... the Welsh version of Thomas? Yeah, T-O-M-O-S, Thomas. And um, Thomas says that he has started the Bible with Nikki and Pippa. So this is where um, there's an app you can download or also buy the book and uh, go through the Bible in one year. And Nikki and Pippa have a little commentary. And he said that he's absolutely loving it. But he also said his prayer life, um, his prayer has taken a little bit, bit of a back seat. And do you have any top tips of how to read it well, still, because it's maybe a little bit long if you're new to reading the Bible, um, how to pay attention, what to pay attention to whilst reading and any top oh, tips yeah. and how are you finding it as well? Yes. Yeah. what Thomas has asked. I really love um, the Bible with Nick and Pippa. That mm. content um, on the sort of commentary, I yeah. think is some of the best biblical commentary. And I've had years when I've done almost every day. I don't think I've ever had a year when I've done it every single day, but I've tried to catch up. Um, top tip number one is, don't try and catch up. Just mm. go to the next. Go one. to the next one because otherwise you get yourself in a pickle and you get all a little bit stressed about completing it. Mm. I think it's better just to say today I'm going to do the Bible. That's that's great. Just okay. concentrate on today. That's t- top tip number one. Um, the other thing that I would say is when I listen to the Bible commentary, I listen to the audio of the Bible mm-hmm. and then I listen to the commentary and I pray just before and I say, Lord, will you highlight to me? what it is that you want me to take out of this. Mm. And then sometimes I don't I don't get stressed if my attention wanes. I'm sometimes walking the dog or I'm like on... I used to listen to it all the time when I lived in Portsmouth and I was walking along the seafront. And I would think it's okay if your mind wanders a bit, mm. but just pray the Holy Spirit will draw out from you what the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to you about. Mm. Um, there's also an express version if you've um, mm. not got enough time or you can just do just the New Testament, just the Psalm. Um, so I think the danger with um, these commentaries, which takes you through the whole Bible in one year, is that you become more obsessed with the challenge than you do with what God's trying to talk mm-hmm. to you about. So I'd just say that's mm. my that's my top tip. Yeah. And I guess I'd also say sometimes in our Christian life, we feel like you have to have maybe 20 minutes Bible time and 20 minutes prayer time. But to encourage you, Thomas, and anyone else listening, that um, your life is prayer, your life is worship. And so you can, as Al said, pray a little bit before you read. And the scripture, the Bible is God's word. It is living, breathing, it's active. So you're kind of praying as you read it. So don't kind of segment your yeah. life that it has to be prayer, then it has to be Bible. Know that just spending time in God's presence, reading his word, praying throughout the day is just as important as maybe like that 20 minutes of specific prayer time. It's good, yeah. good answer. Great. Um, so what can we expect on today's podcast? Well, today... I will, be, I will have to listen along because yeah, I've not... Yeah, you weren't there. there. I know, we missed you. Um, today, I interview the disciples. So coming up is Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus. That's the next episode. But um, today, you're going to hear me interview Liz, who plays Mary Magdalene, and Paris, who plays Matthew. And I also interview Shahar, who plays Simon Peter, and Noah, who plays Andrew. So a little interview with the disciples. Very good. Can't wait. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We're joined on the Stay Curious podcast with some members from The Chosen. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Sure. I am Noah James. I play Andrew. And I'm Shahar Isaac, and I play Simon. And uh, this season, spoiler alert, I may be called also Peter. Oh, very excited. And uh, we love to start this podcast with a little bit of fun. I know you guys have been filming all day, so I brought you a little sweet treat. (laughs) If you want to try, you don't have Perfect. to. Perfect. Shahar would love yes. eight of them. You really don't have to. Uh, so I'm from Wales, and yes. this is a Welsh cake. Wow. So if you would like to try one, you're really welcome. Wow. Oh, but I please, would like no to pressure. Bite on one. Yeah, please. I you take, take a, a bite, smell. and you can give a us a. Smell. a wow. Hey, you smell. They, oh, so it's like not, a cakey. Yeah, but yes. it's not like a pancake. No, I'm going to live no, vicariously yeah. through you. So yeah, give it to me. Give me the whole experience, please. Yes. Yeah, talk us through it. How does it feel? Very good. Yeah, well, you have to say that. Don't you? Here, hold on. Let's do ASMR. Yum, 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 yum. yum. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm, delicious. Welsh cake. All right. I'm getting some raisin here. A raisin? I'm getting some. Um, it's it's not the same consistency as a pancake. No, it's not is it? a pancake. No. 
This would be like a 3 p.m. with a cup of tea. Right, 3 p.m. And we'd yes. have a little snack. I can so see that. what okay. would be your snack of choice? You know, you're on set, you're filming. Uh, Char doesn't little. know what that word is. Oh, yeah. okay. Snack. I heard about this. Yeah. <laughs> what do you talk about? Let me place this plate, but I'm going to hold on to this yeah, one. Please. Which is perfect for an interview, right? Yeah. Just chewing in between. <laughs> chewing every in the background. Shahar once, I'm going to tell this story. What? <laughs> so, so on set, we'll have uh, crafty is what it's called. So there's snacks and stuff, but the actors were very fickle about what we like to eat, you know? Yeah. Uh, Welsh cake uh, notwithstanding <laughs> and um, <laughs> and so we'll go often and we never can find anything to eat because we're like we can't really have that we need to watch what we're eating and one time Shahar came up and he's looking at Crafty and he's like not finding what he likes and I grab a banana I'm like dude there is just like a banana you can just have that and he goes uh, too much sugar. <laughs> I'm like, in the banana? Like, well, yeah, but it's a piece. And I was like, dude, if you can't eat a banana, nothing else on this table will be able to be eaten. Yeah. So um, on set, it feels like you guys are really good friends and having fun, but you're also telling quite an important and significant story. How do you balance the combination of fun and friendship as well as something... That can be quite serious. Listen, you have to know when to put the Welsh cake down, you know? <laughs> and that's kind of what it is. This is the moment. <laughs> it's like that. It's like, when are we having fun? And then when is it a serious moment? And um, I think, well, honestly, sometimes I do get it wrong because I'm having fun and they're like, be quiet now. Like, it's the time to be quiet. But I think we do. There is a, an effort to make sure that whoever's on camera can do the best work they possibly can. So if they need a lot of focus in the room, or sometimes they kind of want to be left alone and, and we can hang out and... Yeah, it's know. almost like you want and you were incredibly respectful, but at the same time, even when you have that moment, when you need that quiet and, and kind of focus, you kind of want to allow the others, yeah. if they need to release a little bit and be fun with each other, you also want to allow that because you want everybody in the room to be in sync. You want you don't want anybody to suffer. You want everyone to be engaged. And sometimes long days and you know it's on you and the mo it's your moment and it's very, very but at the same time, you don't I find it that I don't necessarily I yeah, I don't necessarily want I want everybody to feel very comfortable. So if there if somebody finds themselves in the background of that moment, I kinda wanna allow that space as well. I wanna allow that to feel comfortable and, and make jokes and that kind of thing. So, because it's also helpful, like in the moment, you do want it in some ways to mirror what's gonna happen in the scene. And so if they're not involved in what's going on with you, yeah. you don't want to then force them to be involved before yeah. it happens. You yeah. you want to be able to feel like you're on the outside yeah. sometimes. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. so you totally. just manage your yeah. energy like you either step away or you sit there and let them be. And sometimes, like we use that. I mean, even if you're frustrated because people are telling jokes, that's, great. It's like, that's helpful. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. then when the camera's rolling, you're yeah. right there. You if you're coming in with something different, yes. it's, actually f it's actually helpful to meet the different energy in order to make you change, to slap you in the face with that yeah. energy yeah. rather than kind of control the environment yeah. and kind of like, I want I want you to give me what I want to be receiving. I actually wanted you to give me what you're going to give me and surprise me with it. You know what I mean? And then who knows where I thought I had an idea right. what I'm about to come in with. I thought I had an idea of how this scene plays and then it changes completely and that's the biggest gift that us as actors yeah. can hope for is for you to experience what you're experiencing in the moment and surprise yourself. That's what I feel like we're constantly trying to do. And you guys play the brother, brotherly relationship so well. You, you really do look like brothers and you tease each other and have that kind of um, like the arguments, but also the fun and the yeah. supportive nature. How do you prepare for that role together? Well, as we said, as soon as we wrap, Doc reported, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear him. Yeah, I don't want to speak, speak to him. I don't want to hear <laughs> yeah. no, the name don't Shahar. Send a, don't send a message. Yeah. Don't send an email. Yeah. Please. Who, who, the I'm preparation so, is leave me alone. Yeah. You know Sounds what like I mean? brothers. Yeah, yeah. No, but there really is no preparation. It's really yeah. just about, you know, I feel like we have a lot of fun just showing up on the day and saying, ooh, let's see how this yeah. is going to make itself known to us. And then we are just sort of creating in between us. And that's that's the most fun. I think the cool thing about working together is the fact that uh, we kind of have this agreement that nobody is right. 
and let's let what happens happens and figure it out together and let's just uh, let's play and see what happens you know so where I think the fun thing is that we we come to To play without any you know we're not play too much uh, yeah there's no know. agenda in like let's make this moment yeah. really we're yeah, like yeah. no no whatever <laughs> comes out you yeah know? and it's really fun like that I think that's what created the uh, the thing and uh, to be quite uh, honest also the script from yeah, day one definitely created this relationship that we are still writing and that's um that's an incredible gift that is the heart of the chosen you know is the, is the writing is the script from season one until today and that's something to just you don't need to work too much you know what I mean you can just ride enjoy the ride and let it to uh, do to you rather than do to it yeah and what's been your most memorable experience from filming season four what's a good standout season four season four season four in the realm of uh, spoilers yeah Yes, here we go into the realm of spoilers. Yeah, Let's see how they navigate oh, this yeah. one. <laughs> um, I would say there's a moment that I won't get into uh, due to spoilers, although although on like the posters, you sort of see it. We're aware that. Lazarus is around so let's just put that yeah. out we're aware of his presence here yeah. but there's a moment where um towards the end of the season we were like on the side of a mountain and um we are preparing for a sort of momentous moment and as the camera started rolling the wind picked up and the I just popped that pee into the microphone very loud the wind picked up and the <laughs> leaves went like spiraled all around us and we were just kind of silent as the world it felt like was awakening around us and I remember just honestly feeling like transported directly into that moment yeah. and then that was anticipation for a moment as we were waiting to see how is it going to turn out and that's how it would feel you know you let go knowing oh 2,000 years ago and and then this and then the next time would be that it's we were like with bated breath waiting to see how this mm. how this would turn out and that is I feel like a gift for an actor yeah totally totally it's a uh, you know we spent a lot of time in the group this season and that was really this was really lovely we were constantly on the move and uh, yeah we had um, one day of uh, just kind of uh, protecting uh, getting into a bit of a clash a physical clash so it was an entire day of of pre- kind of uh, protecting and pushing around and everything and I think you um, We may have injured some <laughs> and uh, this but uh, but uh, yeah it was all um, you know a seeing also there's a we kind of see uh, the relationship of uh, Rama and Thomas kind of deepening so it's really nice to see it from the outside a little bit and be a little bit kind of like a guiding you getting my bow through you know <laughs> this realm of what's going on how to play it right and all that kind of stuff that's kind of fun and nice can, can I tell a funny story about Shahar that a funny story okay so we did so many walk and talks what's called this season where you are literally it's just that walking and talking for the entire day and it's like blisteringly hot out and you're spraying and Like the horrible bug spray that maybe only America allows because it's <laughs> everywhere else it's like so, illegal yeah they're so like potent. please no um, <laughs> but that's what you need for the mosquitoes of Utah and so we would walk and we, you know by the end of the day we had walked to like 20,000 steps, 25,000 steps or something. And we're all sort of proud of it because we go, <laughs> it's worth it then, you know? It's worth it at the end of the day. We walk t- 25,000 steps. Shahar goes, I-, I don't think that helps. Like, I think those are junk steps, basically, because you're not doing them all continuously. It's not helpful. I'm like, dude, stop. I need these steps. Like, I need <laughs> that to have been worth it. I had a banana for breakfast. Yes, exactly. I need the 20,000 steps. But then at the end of the season, we're sitting in this, like, what can only be described as a sauna. And it is so hot in there. And we are, like, sweating through the wardrobe the entire time. And Shahar, you know, like, 10 hours into the day, is like, no, but it's good. It's good because I'm sweating. I'm, I'm in a sauna. It's really good for you. And I was like, I don't think it works like that. He goes, no, 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 stop. I need this sauna the way you need those steps. Yeah, don't take yeah. it away from me. Yes. <laughs> oh, guys, thank you so much for your time. It's been great to That's chat. So fun, thank yeah. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. guys. We have Liz, who plays Mary Magdalene, and we have Paris, who plays Matthew. Welcome, guys. Thank you so thank much. You. So happy to be here. Yeah, yeah this is fun. Yeah. And um, we love to start off the podcast with something a little bit fun. And uh, you've been busy recording all day, busy filming. So I brought you a little snack. Yeah, I'm from Wales. And in Wales, we eat Welsh cakes, like kind of our national dish, nice sweet treat. 
Do you up for trying one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I will Dessert. never say no to a sweet treat. You first. Thank you. Grab this. And you can let us know Cheers. what you think. Cheers. What's in it? It is sultanas. What? Um, like raisins. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, raisins. I love it. Okay. It's wow. like cakey, but biscuity. It's amazing, and it tastes like mm. cookie dough. It's still good. Oh. Ema cinnamon cakes uh, yeah. a run, run for, for its you. money. So this I would say delicious. that they're fresh. You cook them like on the griddle, and so. But oh, those are so good. Oh, good. Well, don't like I could take a nap them. after eating them. <laughs> We're gonna eat the whole plate. I'm gonna. Can we, <laughs> can we bring that plate? Yeah, in here? please. Yeah. <laughs> well, my starter question for you guys is: What's your snack of choice? You know, imagine you've been filming all day, 3 p.m., hot, bit hungry. Someone hands you a drink. What do you go for? What's your snack of choice? Well, I'm known to carry a sack. Full of snacks, <laughs> literally, to the point yes. that crew gives me snacks and fills it for me. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. What's it full of? Tell us. <laughs> uh, all the best junk food that you can imagine, <laughs> yeah. from Oreos to Doritos, nice chips and and all that. But my my go to would probably be a a Coke Zero, mm. something with less sugar because I try to avoid that while filming. Yeah. But um, I, I like to have like a. Like, oh, you deserve this dessert after a day of filming. And that's where I eat the popcorn and the chips or whatever. Nice. <laughs> All of it. Yeah. Well, you have to add Welsh kicks to your list. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be eating this throughout this interview. <laughs> yeah, so of course. Yeah. How about you, Liz? What's your snack? It kind of choice? depends on what the weather is, honestly. Because if it's really cold, I love just going and getting a hot tea with honey in it. Boring. I know, but it's really <laughs> helpful. <laughs> um and then if it's really hot outside, oh, I am boring. I'm, no, no. I'm literally about to say um, the elementy <laughs> water. Electrolytes. Electrolytes. That's, That's my elementi. favorite yeah. snack. Neither of those kinds These of snacks. These are not <laughs> snacks, are they? Yeah. I don't understand the question. Um, I I don't know. It's hard because you, wanna, um, you want to, to eat things that won't make your stomach make noise. Yes. <laughs> and point. mine makes some noise. So. I'm usually kind of like careful to to. What she's saying is Mary's gassy. Yeah. <laughs> How about day off? Now the whole that world help? knows. Yeah, we all are though. Yeah. Um, I love chips. I love potato chips, Fritos. Mm, love. Um, and then they usually, I mean, cheese its But uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I think salty. We're usually a healthy salty, cast, though. We've yeah. got. In the mornings, we have fruits mm -hmm. and veggies mm -hmm. and, and the high protein stuff. I know. But then there's a point in the day where you're just exhausted from yeah. the heat. And, you need and the Coke Zero's. And, and the you're chips. like, give me yeah. all the sweets. I give up. Yeah. I pickles, too. Oh, pickle juice. I don't feel guilty for that either. <laughs> it's a natural, like, ele like electrolyte. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, our crew knows that when it's four o'clock in the afternoon, it's pickle juice time. They'll give us shots. So they'll of give us shots of pickle juice. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. It <laughs> works, Amazing. though. It gives you this burst of energy. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Especially if it's spicy. Um, <laughs> Well, guys, what's been your most memorable experience of filming for season four? Oh, season four. Mm. Well. Oh, you can go general if you want. You can go big. There's, well, there's so many. So many. Okay, yeah. Nail helps. it down. Season four helps. I mean, we can probably speak for each other. <laughs> With uh, episodes. The seven. episode we can't talk about. I know. It's hard to talk about it. Yeah, we, I think her and I agree that there is this moment coming up in this season that you'll know it when you see it. It's, it's yeah. very beautiful. It was incredible. And we got to film it, um, I think, over a course of a few different days, mm -hmm. kind of spread out. And the way we filmed it was just really different. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to try something very, very different mm -hmm. as our characters. And um, it was it was somehow very, it was very emotional. It's like it, almost nostalgic mm -hmm. and um, a very special like exchange of gifts and ideas between our characters and um i don't know I'm, i feel like the more i talk the more i'll give it away but we mm. yeah it was really it was fun great fun to do oh, really yeah. cool set it. too yeah. they built a really neat set for it okay yeah. nice and liz sorry i've just taken my <laughs> full of wash kick um <laughs> Growing up as a Christian, when I was reading the Bible, I always noticed the female characters and the followers of Jesus, and that was really important to me. And I never felt like that was portrayed in the media or stories. And I love that The Chosen does yeah. make such yeah. a point of that. Tell us a little bit about your experience um, being one of the main female cast. It's there. so cool to, to see these, these characters that are usually just like in a sentence as a group or yeah. something. Not all of them are named to have like fully fleshed out characters. Yeah. And I think the writers have just done a brilliant job from day one, from the audition for Mary Magdalene, um, reading her backstory and 
I didn't even know that she was possessed by demons and Jesus exercised them. Like I didn't understand. I didn't know that until I read the script and I looked into the gospels and I'm like, that's just a sentence. <laughs> Mary, who Jesus, you know, exercised these seven demons. I'm like, there's a, there's a whole story there. There's a whole backstory. The writers did this brilliant job of making that very plausible and very realistic of what that would look like. Um, what an exorcism would look like, which I, I think in uh, a lot of movies, it, it's uh, very dramatic and very kind of horror film um, with its stylings. And I think The Chosen showed how, how Jesus does that. And it was through love, through seeing her, through seeing past her um, pain into her heart and just how, how much peace she gets from it. It was a really beautiful depiction, I think, of, um, of what a true exorcism might actually be. Um, and then, wow, I went way off topic, but, <laughs> um, but I just, I, I've seen that with each of these female characters as they're writing all of these and, and the women, the actresses that are portraying them, they're just, they're real people. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's something different, I think, for a, a show about Jesus. Yeah. What I think is cool is that this show gives women a voice, a platform, and we don't always think that from, you know, we just know the disciples. So to know that he, Jesus had followers yeah. and they we're women as well. I, I love the different characters that, you know, other female followers that are with our show. It's, it's showing all this diversity, which is so important because you're finding so many people in our audience relate to that. Mm. And they're not all wives and mothers. You know, they're right. entrepreneurs yeah. and business yeah. women yeah. and they're smart and they're... They're boss women. Yes. Yeah, they are. And that's what they were in scripture. Well, so they like, were I financiers of the ministry. Yes. Yeah. 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 And Paris, I love the way you play Matthew. I think it's so fascinating, his personality and what he's like. And I guess I never pictured him in that way until you played the character like you did. And it's like, wow, it makes so much sense. How did you prepare for that role? You know, it's it's a collaborative effort. You know, it takes a village uh, behind behind the, the greatness that Matthew is. And uh, first and foremost, it was Dallas Jenkins' vision and, and in working with him and in just having discussions, uh, creative discussions about the character and kind of building him from the ground up, it's it's kind of it's kind of like how you're seeing this really relatable, uh, f flawed person, but vulnerable person that we all can see in ourselves, and that's why he's so relatable. And and I think for me, I, I've I've certainly relate to Matthew and things he's been through in my own life. So it's just really easy to kind of bring it you know into the character and put myself into into his shoes and experiencing life and the way he sees the world hmm. well it's excellent thank you so much oh for thank you for saying that yeah well in our last minute what's been your favorite episode that you've filmed so far oh, i love them yeah <laughs> i so i'm hard is there a stand -up moment? Uh, yeah i mean you i was like ah uh, i I've, always, I've been saying like it's the walking on water episode mm -hmm. but there's just so many little moments from each season like season three when when we had that talk and you know i, I didn't feel worthy uh to wear the tassels and accept my fate uh you know because i was sh ashamed from my past i think that's something we can all learn from and you know uh there's so many episodes but those i think, I think my favorite is um episode uh three of season two and i and it's the the 15 the minute take. opening yeah. where oh, it's just yeah. one take which was so much fun to do. And then the second part of that episode is all of us around the fire and all of us sharing stories and interacting and all these new group dynamics. Um, but I think I like that because we're all met at in individual sort of circumstances uh, in season one and then leading up to that. And, you know, we're all sort of gathering from our own lives. Mm -hmm. And then that seems like the first episode where we're all suddenly a group. And we're and and even while we're filming th those scenes, like we really had to work as a group to get this one take finished before the sun went down, which was so intense. But it felt like it was like suddenly, oh, the the group is all here, the gang's all together, you know. You know, I didn't feel that because that fire scene, oh, it was a whole yeah. pile on Matthew, yeah. except you. But <laughs> you know, it's it's on a technical level that episode just stands on its own as a, probably a classic episode. Yeah, of, yeah. Of the chosen, um, it's a good example too of like the chosen's always kind of trying new things. Where there's you know each season there's some new thing that that. That is that we haven't done before, and it right. makes us, you know, like, kind of I mean, excited and nervous. This and, season is something you know yeah. we haven't done before too, so it's it's yeah, yeah it keeps uh, 
Exactly. Getting used to different. Yeah. 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 Well, we're Expect the unexpected. To, yeah. yeah. Looking forward to watching the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Thank guys. You. It's been great to chat. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for the treats. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you Thanks. for those cakes. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Stay Curious podcast. It sounds like it was a really good time. We had a great time. They enjoyed their Welsh cakes. Oh, really good. I love that you did that. I remember um, somebody from our team was interviewing them on the red carpet and asked them if they'd had a sausage roll. And Liz, who plays Mary Magdalene, says that she'd had a full English breakfast and an afternoon tea, all within 24 hours of being in the UK. A full British experience. Yeah, yeah. and now she's had a Welsh experience. Yeah, yeah very good. Well, you can stay tuned for next week where I'll be interviewing Jonathan Rumi. But hope you've enjoyed listening to today's episode. And if you have any more 40 before 40 ideas for Al, or if you have any listener questions for us or anything you're curious about, you can email us at uk at alpha.org or you can DM us on our Run Alpha socials. Thanks so much for listening and catch you next time.